welcome to sri agandes women's college gandivas which is organizing one day webinar on role of whatsapp during the pandemic and future jointly organized by department of biochemistry and institution innovation council now i request dr k batmulochana head department of biochemistry to give welcome address thank you sir good morning to all my honorable chief guest dr muthu singaram sir ceo incubation at health center technology innovation center the indian institute of technology madras respected chairman lion bean vidyatran sir honorable secretary thiruvala lion m kamanam sir most beloved and respected madam principal dr s maithili madam vice principal ms k suma madam my dear colleagues and my dear students very good morning to one and all it is immense pleasure for me to introduce our today's chief guest dr muthu singaram sir ceo incubation health center technology innovation center indian institute of technology madras and founder vibha uh, zone we warm welcome you to this webinar sir He has over 25 years of experience in engineering, management, and entrepreneurship. He is also certified corporate director from Institute of uh, Directions. He has been a judge and a mentor in many business plan competitions, including uh, AIM, IIT, and Power of Ideas, etc. He was also a council member for the National Incubator Network. He has mentioned. consulted and facilitated participants from many parts of the world he was the project director at the british telecom of other asian research center in a span of 16 months the team filed 10 patents and 16 publications currently he is working on a virtual international business accelerator of the viber zone based in several Uh, locations he is the innovation driver for several uh, universities in uh, canada india and malaysia mr mukta is a uh, uh, mentor and the entrepreneur is resident in several universities mr mukta is still involved in self with new uh, startups and works with, the, with them to go to market Uh, we welcome you one and all for our today's so webinar on role of startups during the pandemic and future. Thank you for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Thank you to one and all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Once again, welcome you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am, to inspiring welcome address. Next, I invite today's chief guest, Mr. Muthu Singaram, CEO. Incubation Healthcare Technology Innovation Center. Sir, I warmly welcome, sir. You proceed, sir. Can you allow me to share the screen? Yes, sir. So I need you to let me share the screen, otherwise my PPT is not be shown. If you can allow me to share the screen, then I can start. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also, my colleague, she will need to be able to present. Sir, you can proceed, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and also, please allow, uh, please allow Miss Pratista also to be able to present because she will also be doing part of the presentation. Okay, sir. Please, uh, and uh, let me know whether you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Screen is is yes. it showing? Yes. Okay. 
So good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll get started. The title we have given for today's talk is Role of Startups During the Pandemic and the Future. So it is an important topic which we need to speak uh, about. Uh, you have a lot of people waiting in the waiting room. You want to let them in or I'll have let them in? Okay. Uh, so this presentation has references made to a couple of important uh, reference points. One of them is the WHO report and the other one is Times of India. So let's just start moving. Okay. Usually we ask people to take 30 seconds to think about what, what they would like to achieve this morning while we are presenting. So it's so they will be able to spend the time usefully. So I'll just keep quiet for a few seconds and then you can think about what you like to achieve this morning. Okay, we we'll get started now. Okay, the pandemic, COVID-19, the pandemic itself has led to a dramatic loss of human life, as you know, around the world, not only in India, and it's also put a lot of pressure on public health, our food system, and the work, and our work world. I mean, on a normal day, I would have probably had, I would have come to visit your center, and we would have possibly done this online. So now at the moment, we are doing this off, uh, online, which is in a way good because we have plenty of people can join and we can do this from, I'm, I'm in Chennai and you are where you are and we don't have to travel away. And like my, my co-speaker is not here, she's thousands of miles away and she's able to participate this morning because of the pandemic too. So it has got economic and social disruption caused by the pandemic is devastating. Tens of millions of people are at risk in extreme poverty. It was forecast around 800 million people would be out of, would be struggling under nutrition over the last year, end of last year. So that is how scary this pandemic is. Now go to the next slide. If you look at the reality check here, nearly half of the world's 3.3 billion working force, they are in danger of losing their jobs. And particularly people in the informal economy are the ones going to suffer. And without means to earn an income during lockdown, many are unable to feed themselves and their families. So the pandemic has affected the entire food chain and has laid bare to fertility. As you can see on the right hand side, the world has lost 25.5 core jobs in 2020 due to the COVID. This is the UN uh, report released just a few weeks back. What is the outcome? Border closures, we have trade restriction and confined measures have been preventing farmers from accessing markets, including buying inputs and selling produce. It's affected the entire agriculture work phase where they are struggling to move the food into the food chain. The pandemic has made many people lose jobs. Millions of livelihoods have been disturbed. The breadwinners lose jobs, they fall ill and die. Because of this, we have pressure on food security and nutrition of millions of women and men around the world. So the low-income countries, of course, end up suffering more because of the pandemic. Millions of people, agriculture workers, wage and self-earners become unemployed and they find it difficult to feed themselves. Regular facing high levels of working poverty, malnutrition and poor health. So. These are a few other things which the pandemic has brought upon us. So important to look at. If you look at the frontline workers, we had over 300 doctors have lost their lives. 1,500 nurses as, as end of last year have lost their lives. It's more than what happened in the World War I. So you can see the number of frontline 
workers, health workers have lost their lives trying to keep the rest of us safe. So it's extremely sad to see all this happening, but end of the day, what can we do? We need to see how we can solve this. And then let's move on to the next one. The facts, with low and irregular income and lack of social support, many of them are spurred to continue working, often in unsafe conditions and exposing themselves and their families to additional risks. When, risk, when experiencing income losses, people tend to resort to negative activities to cope the financial requirements of their own organization or on their own family needs. Migrant workers suffer because of loss of job and people don't pay. Agriculture food workers, primary producers. If you remember last year, farmers were giving away their produce because they were not able to get the food chain moved into the food chain. So they were offering it for people to come and pick it up and take it away. Even one farm in Bangalore was giving away chickens because they had they didn't know how to get them sold. So they were giving them away if we went to collect them. Another farmer in, in, in Gujarat was giving away uh, five kilos or something to each individual who comes to collect the vegetables. So you can see all that happened because of the pandemic, there was no movement of food and became the threat in food chain. So this is very, very difficult. We also have to adverse to healthcare and safety practices have also been troubled to over the pandemic. Action needed. Immediate and purposeful action is required. As you can see, each time, every morning, every now, every news you switch on, that's all people talk about how to solve this problem. Particularly, attention must be paid to the situation of women who are overrepresented in low-paid jobs and care roles, and different forms of support is required. Things like cash transfer, child allowances, healthy school mail and so on. So including micro and small and medium enterprise businesses, we talk about people giving them loans and so on. In designing and implementing such a measure, it's essential that the government works closely with employees and workers. If you recently hear, many of the corporates are saying, don't have a full lockdown because that will create problems and because we will not have income. As you can see on the right hand side, recently elected Vice President of the United States said 25 lakh women leaving work due to COVID in, in, in the United States. And this is almost 18 lakh of men have left that as well. So you can see lots and lots of people are losing their jobs. Now we look at this, what has India has been very, very good. This, I captured this data a few weeks back. India has been donating its vaccine because the problem is not only in India, the problem is worldwide. Unless we protect people outside India, India is not going to be safe. So we need to support them, giving them all the vaccine diplomacy. Very important. Of course, this is now outdated, it's about a month old. So it will be much, much more. Now what is needed? Now is the time for global solidarity. That's why many countries come and the way India, the way India is willing to give its vaccine to others, share it because it is time to share. Only together can this be resolved because this is a huge health, social and economic impact the pandemic has caused. We must also recognize the policy brief issued by the United Nations Secretary. We are committed to pulling our expertise and experiences to support countries in their crisis response message and effort to achieve the sustainable development goal. So this is very, very, very important. All this is what is needed. Long-term plan. We need to develop a long-term plan in order to help in terms of challenge facing the health and agriculture workers. Priority must be given addressing underlying food security and malnutrition challenges, rural poverty and so on. So this is where startups have huge potential to play, to see how they can provide solutions. We must rethink the future of our environment, very crucial, and tackling climate changes and environment degradation, which is important. That's why you see lots of people talk about the environment. Protecting the environment is a bigger challenge than COVID-19 itself. Only then can we protect the health, livelihood, 
of the citizens around the world. So very, very important. What has the lockdown done? Is the only method to control the spread. So they had controlled the spread by early on lockdown in India. It doesn't resolve the problem, but it helps hospitals and the government and others to be prepared to handle. So India did a, did a wonderful job at the start of the crisis to do a lockdown and that helped protect a lot of Indians and hospitals were prepared to get things into place. There was shortage of ventilators, shortage of PPPs, shortage of masks, all that was helped by putting lockdown at that early stage. Obviously it affects education, economy, politics, and agriculture. All these are affected because of the lockdown. COVID-19 has been multiple and not only limited to society at large, apart from migrant workers, gig workers, Almost all of us have been affected by this. So it's very, very important to do that. Now, going through the results of this, the world came to a stagnant position. Economies haven't grown very much in the last year. COVID-19 on education has been very cruel. And you being in college, you would know you have not been able to go to classes because of this. And the World Bank title broken, beaten or broken in formality in COVID says students who have not gone to school now for 18 months or so are going to have such difficult times in getting back to school, especially in countries like India, where we have struggled and done a good job of getting a lot of children to school. That's now going to become a habit. Parents are going to be used to having children. And again, the authorities will have to reboot to get all the children back in school. So that's going to be a big challenge, especially children who went to the early days of primary school who have no interaction with others will find it very, very difficult when they return to school. Schools have been out of action. On This will be now the second year we are almost out of action. Now, outcome has proven that man is social. People don't like to sit at home, as you can see. Everybody wants to move around here and there. So it's all very, very important that we recognize that. In lockdown, multi-calls have been received on helplines. And the, as the minister said, they put in a lot of call lines to help women of domestic violence, children, and so on, and taking great care of that. India recognizes as a land of diversity, we have many, many things happening here. Much happens here. Things have been changed to meet the needs of society, what the government is trying to do. And as there is a preamble of the constitution where it talks about equality, fraternity, integrity as well. So it is now more important than ever to ensure these are all in place. Now, what has the pandemic done? It has made doctors do more telemedicine. So plenty of opportunities for startups, a great, great help for startups. Electronic med medical records have become very, very important. People are starting to share the medical reports, especially to physicians who are out of town, who can give um, a stick view and so on. So all this is extremely important for them. Human touch and connection has now reduced. So all new applications will need to take into account all these things. So it's very, very, very important to do all this. Uh, I want to ask the organizers, you've made me the host, so it's actually disturbing me with people coming in. I'm letting them in and they're constantly coming. Can I stop doing that? Because it's disturbing my train of thought. So if you, you've made me the host, so I have to let people in and it's actually disturbing me tremendously. Sorry, sir. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to manage as best I can, but these people are keep on coming and going on, keep on coming and going. It's disturbing my train of thought completely. So I'm going to stop letting anybody in. See another no, person. Sir, yeah. So, sir, you have to continue, sir. So yeah. I asked them, my students. Sir, sorry, sir. Students, uh, I will manage, sir. You continue, sir. <laughs> continue, sir. Some students are villaging, sir. sir. There is no proper network and. Uh, yes, sir. That's why I, I understand. Students are village students, I, sir. I, that's why. I understand, but as a presenter, it is very difficult for me to yeah, manage yeah, people coming yeah. in and going out. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Oh, sure. Okay. Then I will provide jobs. 
okay, we're going back to human touch and connections are also becoming more difficult now because people are scared. They don't want to meet each other. Many of us don't go to hospitals. We don't go to doctor. We don't go out because we are all worried. And then triaging has become very, very important. It's something medical professionals have to play extreme uh, with great caution and importance they have to play how to do triaging. There are three types of patients who come to the hospital. One is, is one you do something and then they will become well. The other, you do nothing and they will still become well. And the third, whatever you do, doesn't become well anyway. So the doctors now have to make a decision. Often this decision has to be made, not the youngest patient, like what we would like to think. It could be the oldest patient who has a better chance of living than the doctor has to make that decision. So in many hospitals, the younger doctors have been told, don't worry when you make this decision. These decisions are made not by you, but by the hospital itself. So you don't have to worry about making this decision. And public health has become in the forefront, nothing like before. Sharing of information, drugs and PPPs are very well now shared by everybody. Hospital occupancies have come down. So places like in Southeast Asia, where the government have asked private hospitals to handle COVID patients because they have beds and government hospitals don't have beds. And psychosocial counseling has become very important. And you talk lots and lots about people now talking about mental health because it's become another very, very important topic. And then social distancing, not isolation. What we are doing now is distancing, not isolation. So it's very, very important to do all that. Okay, what has technology done? It has actually helped 19% have not actually done any change. However, you see 75% have actually accelerated. That means technology has been playing a huge role. What has the pandemic done? We look at huge drug companies are allowing companies to make their drugs for royalty free, which you would have never, never seen in the past. Not everyone is getting poor. According to Oxfam early in the year, $3.9 trillion have gone into the billionaires of the world. And you can see on the right-hand side, all the major tech companies have made huge profits over this particular pandemic period. So what is there for the future of pandemic? Many of us are going to be in the car park. We will not go inside because we are scared of catching COVID-19. So we will wait. We will wait and wait in the car park where the doctor secretary will tell you, you're ready now, you're next, come. This is already happening a few weeks ago when I went to, when I went to do my license, renew my license, the guy was standing in the queue and told me you come in just two minutes before your turn. So it's already happening. And I was sitting in the car waiting for him to call me. So this is how it happens. Now it will be less hospital centric. People will be scared. So startups play a big role. Virtual care and telemedicine, very, very important. Privacy need to be relaxed. Even in the United States, they've started relaxing it. If you don't, you'll not be able to do a lot of the data crunching work. Health bots are important. E-consulting, as I said earlier, especially for specialist care is going to be important. All this will only work if there's an economic model. If there's no economic model, it will not work. And we need to have self-care. Many of us are going to now take self-care, very important. So 